All right, we've done a few tutorials on Photoshop before, uh, including on sections and elevations, but this time I'm going to use a slightly different technique. I'm going to be using layer masks. Now, if this is your first time ever working on Photoshop, yeah, of course, it can be a little bit intimidating. But here's the thing. There's hundreds of different ways to do things in Photoshop. But you, only, you don't need to know all hundreds of ways. You only need to know one or two. And as it happens, there is a sort of an architect's way of working on Photoshop. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Now, I'm, um, I'm only going to look at the mechanics of it. I'm not really going to suggest cool ways of making things look graphically fantastic. I'll leave that up to yourself. I'm just going to show you how things get done. What are the basics? And then if you want to have unusual looking skies, you know, that's up to you. You can do that uh, yourself. Now, for architects, the key thing about Photoshop is focusing on layers. It's the fact that Photoshop has layers. That's the system of working on layers that makes it useful for architects in the first place. Otherwise, I don't really think we'd be using it. So the layers work like this. The image that we end up with, let's say a plan or a section, we might be inclined to think a little bit that it looks like a, an artist canvas, but that's not really what it is. It's better to think of it a little bit more like it's a collage, a collage made up of layers, stacked layers. So if you, to, if you were to see it a little bit like this, uh, you'd have uh, a series of layers and some of the layers would have holes in them, let's say. They would be PNG files, uh, files that have no backgrounds to them. You can eliminate a background. Some of the layers might be translucent and some of the layers would have splashes of color on them, which might represent like uh, wall paint or something that looks like a material like timber. Now we stack the layers into a column. And the idea is, is that the layer that's closest to us at the top of the column, or the layers that are closer to us at the top of the column, they're the ones we see most of. And the ones that are furthest away from us, they're the ones we see the least. So from an architect's point of view, this helps a lot because it might be useful to think of it like the furthest layer away is going to be the furthest wall away or the thing that's off in the distance. And the nearest layer to us might be the plants or the trees that might be in a garden or furniture in a room. So uh, what's closest to us in reality uh, will, be close, will be the closest layer to us in Photoshop. Yeah, we work on layers. Uh, here's the layers column over here. Now, you can end up with a lot of layers, even in a very simple little drawing like the one we're going to try and do now. So uh, it's not so much that I recommend that you name them. I insist that you name your layers or you can group the layers together. So if you've uh, a bunch of layers, let's say vegetation, uh, you might have lots of different layers, each one representing a plant or a tree. You'll group them into one group and you can color code them. This means then that the column of layers that you have stacked up on the right-hand side doesn't look so overwhelming. Now, the great thing about working on layers and particularly the way we're gonna look at it today is the fact that if you make a mistake, it allows you to undo that mistake. So a project is never really, like a drawing project is never really a disaster like it would have been in the old days when you were drawing by hand and you made a terrible mistake and that was the end of it. With Photoshop, it's actually quite forgiving. So no matter how terrible you think the mistake might be, there's usually a way out of it. Okay, so uh, yep, yeah, we're gonna start off. Um, the first thing I'm presuming is that you know already how to do, how to make a drawing in AutoCAD and how to save that drawing or print that drawing as a PDF because we bring our AutoCAD drawings into Photoshop as PDFs. If you're not familiar with how to do that, I've got another tutorial uh, which goes through that in two or three different stages. So, uh, yep, yeah. so uh, away we go. We'll bring our PDF into AutoCAD and this is where we start. So we open up Photoshop and we have a file that we've selected, uh, which we drew in AutoCAD and we saved in an A3 sheet at a scale of one to 50. I'll make this, uh, I'll make this file available to you so we can all work on the same project. But this is, it's a little house and it's my friend's house and he has an existing part of the building and he's putting a little extension onto the side. Uh, first thing I do is I'm going to rename that layer by double clicking on its current name and I'm going to call this, this layer pattern. By right mouse clicking on the box that contains the eye, but not the actual eye itself, on the box, I can change the color of that box and I'm going to choose red. Now, I color this layer red because it's the most important layer. It's the one that has the drawing on it, and I always want to be able to find it. So it's the only one that's going to be red. And it's usually going to end up in the middle of the stack of layers on the drawing. Now I want to create a new layer, 
and a background layer and I do that by pressing this little icon down here in the corner and it creates a new layer for me which is called layer one and I'm going to drag layer one down below my pattern and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it background and once I get the spelling right my next step is to give this background layer a color which I do by selecting the layer going over to my little color picker here I'm making sure that white is the color that's active uh, then I go up to the paint bucket tool and I splash that layer with white I make it white now making sure the background layer is selected I'm going to go up to that little lock icon and I'm going to lock that layer and I'm doing that because I don't want that layer to be moving around on me I want it to stay put when I'm working on various other layers uh, Photoshop can be a little bit funny like that okay the next thing is with the pattern layer selected we're going to go left and go up to the magic wand tool then I come into my workspace and I click on the area that you could imagine being the sky I'll know that the tool is doing the right thing because because the sky will suddenly be outlined by these little dots which appear to move they're typically referred to as ants by people who work in Photoshop so with the area selected I just simply hold down the left mouse button and drag my mouse over to the new layer button over here and I create a new layer and then I go two buttons over and I just quickly press the button which creates a new layer mask okay let's have a quick look and see what I've done here I've created a new layer and you'll see that uh, on this layer I've got two icons the icon in the left that's my drawing so that's where I'll be working so I'll be applying colors and textures and so on the little icon on the right that's the mask so whatever changes I make to my drawing the one on the left they'll appear where the mask is white they won't appear where the mask is black now we've more things to say about how masks work but we'll just take it one step at a time let's just get a handle on what they are first so what we're going to do is we're going to use this layer and this layer mask to put in a landscape type so it's just a typical Irish landscape type scene uh, a photograph that I found on the internet it's not uh, specific to the site now what I did here was is I had just copied the image off the internet and then I opened a file in Photoshop and I pasted that image into its own file then I used the magic wand tool that we've already learned how to use and I selected the sky which in this pic was actually a sort of a blue gray kind of thing and I simply deleted it because I didn't want the sky so now in that image all I have is the uh, green hills of some random part of Ireland now as you can see I've got several Photoshop files all open all at the same time you'll see why why in a minute and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear away the one that has the landscape image in it because I want to be able to see two files simultaneously the one that has the landscape image and the one that has the house so making sure that I have the landscape file active and I can see that because in the layers bar over here to the right hand side in the layers column you can see that the landscape layers are active I just drag on that landscape layer and I bring it into my house drawing now just to make my life a little bit easier because I'm not going to need this landscape file anymore I'm just going to close it out so that uh, my workspace becomes a bit tidier now as you can see the landscape image that I've just dragged over as a layer it's a little bit smaller than the house that uh, the house drawing I'm working on and um, that means that I'm going to have to stretch out this layer image a little bit in order for it to fit which means of course that I, I probably use a little lose a little bit of uh, quality in that image a little bit of resolution but that doesn't matter a whole lot because um, it's only a background image it's not uh, central to the overall section now this new layer that I just brought in the landscape layer and the mask layer I worked on I'm just going to drag them below the pattern layer and you'll see why now you can see I can see the drawing on top of the landscape which is what I want and I'm just going to uh, grabbing the handles of the landscape layer I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit until it fits into my image uh, I promised I wouldn't be overly fussy when I was doing this tutorial but of course as an architect uh, I'm going to be fussier than than I ought to be but there is one little thing that I just have to do I have to make sure that the Sun appears as if it's coming in from the left hand side and not from the right 
So making sure that my landscape layer is selected, I go up to edit, then I choose transform, and then I'm going to flip horizontal. So you can see it's a handy little trick. Now it looks like the sun is coming from the west, if you get me, and not from the east. So this is where our layer mask comes in, the one that we worked on. I'm just going to go to that, that layer. I'm going to click on the mask and hold it down with the mouse and drag it up onto the landscape layer and look what happens. The uh, landscape appears around the house and not over it. And that's what I wanted to do. Let me just tweak it a bit because I'm an architect. Now, the next thing I want to do once I finish messing with this is I want to create a sort of an atmospheric sky, kind of an Irish looking sky, misty. And I'm going to use the layer that we created the mask on to do this. So I click on the, that layer, make it active. And then I'm going to come over to this little icon here, the little white square, uh, which is where I select my colors. And when I click on that, this is what happens. So I get this color picker dialog box and I just use the slider here to get into the blue zone. And then when I have something that I kind of want, I just go over to the larger pane and pick a kind of a grayy blue color, choose OK. Now I'm going over to my paintbrush tool that's on this tab over here. And when I click it, I already have some, uh, I already have a paintbrush preset, which I should have explained. I'll get to that later. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to click the layer that has the layer mask on it and making sure that I'm working on the picture icon and not the mask icon. I start putting some uh, misty blue West of Ireland sky into my landscape. Um, and I'll just mess around with this a little bit until I kind of have something that I think is useful. Okay, that'll do. And now I'm just going to switch these two layers off so they become invisible and they don't distract me while I move on to the next operation, which is to work on the roof. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing that I did the last time. I'm going to create a layer mask. So with the pattern layer selected and the magic wand tool selected, I choose the upper part of the roof and the little ants come up. And then with the left mouse button held down, I drag my mouse over to this little icon over here, the create new layer icon, and it creates a new layer. And then I immediately press on create new layer mask. And now I have a new layer with a new layer mask, just like we did the last time. So now I need to create some slate texture to put on my slate roof. So what I did just before I began the tutorial is I went on the internet and I found an image of some natural slate that I can work with. Now it's a small tile here. This will do me fine. Uh, it's important when you're choosing an image from the internet or whatever image, wherever you find it, that you choose something that is very rectilinear. That's because the slate is going to appear in the elevation, so it's going to look rectified. We will not have perspective lines. So find yourself a little image just like this, or nearly like this, copy it, then open a new Photoshop file, and paste it in, and we're good to go. It doesn't have to be perfect, just something like this. It's just for the purposes of doing the exercise. So, oops, important lesson there. If I don't have the layer selected, Photoshop ain't gonna help me to do anything. So I better select that layer. Now, I'm going to go up to Edit. I'm going to come down to Define Pattern. And I'm gonna call the pattern a name. I'm gonna call it uh, roof slate. So actually we're going to call this little image here a swatch in future. So I'm going to make some texture from a swatch. So I've defined a pattern. Okay, now I'm going to go into another file that I previously opened, which is I, which is where I'm going to assemble swatches into textures. I have a layer here. I'm just going to make a few more. I do that by pressing Control J a few times and it automatically creates duplicate layers for me because I'll be making a few different uh, few different textures as we go through the exercise. So I'll choose the bottom one here. Make sure that layer is active. I'm going to go up to Edit. No, Edit. Yeah. Go down to Fill. Now watch. I'm going to, making sure that Pattern is selected. I'm just going to go down and I'm going to see that little icon of that tile swatch that we just were working on. And I choose OK. 
now a dialog box is going to open up offers me all sorts of um, options and as it happens I'm just going to I'm not going to mess with this at all I'm just going to choose the options that it offers me so watch what happens Photoshop has taken the swatch that I was working on just a moment ago and it has made a texture for me by tiling those swatches together now it's not absolutely ideal because if I look close enough I can see that this image is made up of a series of tiles and if I had a bit more time to work on this or if I was uh, making a final presentation for a client I'd use some of Photoshop's other very powerful tools to disguise the fact that this image is made up of a series of tiles so what I want to do now is I want to bring this new slate tile texture that I've created into the drawing of my house so to do that I'm going to go back to the file that has the textures that I'm making and I'm going to tear that file tab down so I can see both images at the same time my tile and my house so making sure that I have the slate file active I go over to my layer stack I choose the layer that has the slates on it and I just drag that across into the drawing of my house and now I have a slate texture that I can I'm going to attach reattach the file that uh, comprises the slate texture back to the main window and then I'm going to go back to the other file where we had the little tile swatch the original one that we made the texture out of and I'm just going to close that out because I want to declutter my my workspace as I'm working now okay back in my house file you'll remember the last thing we did is we made a layer mask and now we're going to use that layer mask to make our roof look good so I'm going to select that layer and choosing the mask icon that's the little mostly black icon I'm going to control drag that onto my slate layer now as it happens I alt dragged it I should have control dragged it it's a mistake I'm always making so you control drag and it'll bring the layer mask onto our slate layer and there you can see our slate is more or less in place now this bit's important you'll see this little link icon on the layer between the drawing and the mask I'm going to make sure that that is switched off and then making sure that I have the slate element of the the slate icon on the layer selected I go up and choose the selection tool and I'll drag those handles down and look what happens you can see that I can make that slate look a little bit more proportionate so I'm just going to drag it over to the side here and uh, that's just about right okay I need to I need to stop fussing too much with this and just get on with it come on that'll do you now back in my layer stack there's one thing I should have done that I didn't do uh, you remember I created a layer in order to make the mask well I'm just going to delete that and get it out of the way because I'm not going to need it and I don't need any more layers appearing in this pile than I am actually going to use okay so about half of my roof is currently slated so what I need to do is make sure I have that layer selected and I'm going to hit Control J that creates another version of that uh, slate texture and I drag it across and I complete my roof and what I should really do here, here now is just leave it alone but of course I'm not going to um, just tweak it a little bit those slates look like they look like they're the right height but they look like they're too wide so I'm just going to make them a bit narrower okay I just leave that be not do any more to it control J make a copy of that move it across and then control J a second time of course okay we've got roof coverage and I should leave that alone but it is bothering me a little bit because I can kind of see where the where those two layers join God, I wish I, I wish I could stop fussing. Just bear with me, and I'll try and do a little better job. Now, as I say, uh, Photoshop does have some other tools that would, um, that would sort this out for me, uh, and we'll get to them another day. But uh, for now, I'll just try and line it up a bit better. And okay, there we go. All right, I have a roof. Now what I'm going to do next is, is I'm going to click on one of those layers that has the roof slate on it and then I'm going to hold shift and select the two other layers then right click choose oops right click choose merge layers and now they're all merged down to one layer which means I've got fewer layers in my column which will make life a lot easier and I'm going to rename that layer and I'm going to call it main roof and now I want to get the lower roof section sorted so I'm going to go back up to my magic wand tool select it come down to the lower roof 
and uh, oh yeah sorry I have to click on the pattern layer and make sure I have a layer active so I'm going to select the two areas of the lower roof so the ants are walking around left click drag on my mouse go down to the new layer button create a new layer and then immediately immediately create a layer mask so now I'm ready to create a slate roof in this area so what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm just going to go back to that file that has the roof texture in it and I'm going to drag another copy of that over so that I have a separate layer. Now there's another way I could do it and I'll do it a different way in a minute but we'll just do it this way so that um, you get into the habit of it. So back to that file that has my textures on it. Tear the tab down so I can see both files at the same time. Making sure that I have the slate file active. I'll go over to the layer that has the slate on it and I'm just going to drag that over into my drawing. Let's select our file that has our patterns in it and reattach the tab and get it out of the way. Okay, I'm going to grab that slate layer and grab the tabs on it and rescale it, make it a little bit smaller, more manageable, put it into place, drag it down just a tiny bit more again. Yeah, okay. Whoops. Yeah. Now back to our layer that has our newly created layer mask on it and control drag up to the layer that has the slate on it and oh god I did it with alt but you're going to use control and you can see I, I have a copy of the layer mask now on my slate and my slate is trimmed down to size. Now the original layer that we used to create that layer mask I don't need it anymore so I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to drag it down to the bin and get rid of it. Oops didn't do it the first time for some reason gonna to have to do it again drag gone now naturally of course I'm going to get all obsessive compulsive about the shape of these tiles sorry I just uh, too wide I want to make them look smaller okay so I'll just drag them in a tiny little bit here and then I'm just going to control J and make another copy of that layer I have two copies and I reach for the first one the topmost one and I bring it across and I've got my lower roof co covered select the top layer Hit shift, select the bottom layer, right click, merge layers. Now it's all one layer and I'm going to call that the lower roof. Okay, let's see how that looks. Zoom in, zoom out. Um, yeah, it's okay. I think it's time now to move on to the next step. The next step is going to be we're going to do something about the glass in the windows and doors glazing. So up to the magic wand tool, boah, I hadn't selected a layer, select the layer. Up to the magic wand tool, go to the areas where the glazing is and I just uh, select each of the areas where we've got a bit of glass and the ants start crawling around. That means that uh, that means I've selected the right areas. You'll notice in the glazed areas that I have these diagonal dash marks. Well, I did those in AutoCAD. They were to indicate which way these windows and doors open, but of course, uh, I don't need them now. I just forgot to get rid of them before I saved the AutoCAD file. So you know the drill by now. I'm going to hold down the left button on the mouse, drag down to the Create New Layer icon, create a new layer, and then immediately create a new layer mask. Before I started the tutorial, I went on the internet and I found an image of a pane of glass, which was wet, actually. And then I made a copy of that image and I pasted it into its own file. Now, a couple of things. First of all, when people are doing glazing in elevations and sections, they frequently just make a layer and choose a blue color and paint that layer blue. So uh, the blue represents the glass. It can look very flat, not very convincing. Uh, I prefer just to um, use this method here. It's uh, not very scientific. When I'm doing a proper presentation, I'll mess around with some of Photoshop's powerful tools to make it look a little bit more convincing. But for now, we'll just use it in its basic form. You'll find that it gives the uh, glazing a sense of reflection. And also you get a feeling that uh, light is being refracted from inside. Now, I've already defined a pattern from this swatch by going up to edit, uh, going down to define pattern and then calling it a name. So um, I think I called it glass panel or glazing, something like that. So now we just go over to uh, the file that we've specially created to make our textures and we'll make a texture out of our glass swatch. So the layer on which we made that slate texture, I'm just going to switch that off and I'm going to make a second layer active. I'll go over to edit, I'll choose fill, pattern fill, 
and I'm going to go down and find that glass image. Now, I've done this two or three times, so I'll just choose one of them. It doesn't really matter. Choose OK. The dialog box comes up and offers me some options. I'm, uh, it looks weird, but I'm just going to choose it the way it is. You'll see now why in a second. I hit OK, and now I have um, a glass texture. OK, I think you can guess what's coming. I'm going to tear this tab away so that I can see the two documents at the same time the one that has the glass uh, uh, texture in it and the one that has the drawing in it. And I'm just going to choose the layer that has the glass texture, drag it across to my drawing, and now I've got a glass texture inside my drawing. I'm going to reattach that texture file up to the main window, back to my drawing, and just do a little bit of resizing here. I'm not going to be as fussy with glazing as I was about the um, roof tiles. I'll just get it more or less into place. It just has to be sitting over where those those windows and doors are. Okay, now over to the layer where I ma made the layer mask. Control click. I all clicked. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do that out of habit. I'm so sorry. I all clicked. Oh. Anyway, anyway, go back to that layer that I no longer want, the one that I created the layer mask on, and I'm going to bin that one. And now I'm going to reselect the layer that has the glazing on it, and I'm just going to um, I'm just going to grab the handles on the layer and uh, reposition it a little bit so some of those marks on the glazing look a little less obvious. Uh, wait a second now, I somehow managed to create an additional layer that I did not intend to make. Uh, I honestly don't know how I how I did that. I don't need it, so I'm going to uh, bin it. Yeah, okay, doesn't do any harm. Uh, yeah, we're still working on the correct layer, so I'm selecting this layer again. Sorry for that little detour. And I'm just going to move it around until it sits uh, somehow. You know, the, the glazing duct just looks a little bit more plausible. Now I can do a few things with this later on to make it a bit more convincing, but for the time being, what I'm going to do now is just rename that layer and call it glazing. Okay, so we're making a bit of progress here. Okay, um, I think what we'll do before we take a break is we'll create a material for the window and door frame. So to do that, I'm just going to switch off the visible layers so that I can see things a little bit better. There we go. And I'm going to make sure that the pattern layer is selected and I go over and I choose the magic wand tool again. And I go back to the windows and doors, but instead of picking the glazing areas now, I'm picking the areas where the timber frame might be. The ants start crawling, means I've made the correct selection. Hold the left mouse button down and go over to my new layer button, create a new layer, and then immediately create a new layer mask. This should be becoming a kind of automatic to you now. Why don't I call that layer a new name now? I call it timber frame. Now, uh, previously I made a copy of some timber from an image I found on the internet. I copied it and I pasted it into its own file and I chose edit define pattern and I think I called it called it window frame. And straight back over to the file where we have our textures. I'm going to switch the layer off that has the uh, glass texture on it. I'm going to switch on a new layer, the layer just above. And this is where we're going to make our texture for our timber frames. So I make that current. And I'm going to go into Edit, choose Fill. Oops, forgot to make sure that my layer is visible. There. So that layer is current and visible now. And uh, back up to Edit, choose Fill. And I go down to that uh, timber swatch that I'm going to use for making my timber frames. Uh, I get that dialog box that offers me all these choices. And I'll just go ahead and, and take what they give me, which looks a little bit weird, but you'll see now in a sec, it's going to work. So. Um, Yep, I'm just uh, tearing the uh, tab for that file down so I can see the drawing and the texture both at the same time. And with the uh, texture file active, I'm going to go over and pick that uh, timber layer and drag it over into my drawing file where it appears as a drawing layer. And now because I don't need the swatch anymore, I'm switching out that file. And I'm gonna reattach the texture file tab into the window. Okay, so now I'm in my drawing file and I have a timber layer that I could use for making um, timber frames for doors and windows. 
I'm going to bring my timber layer down closer to my layer mask and then hitting control on that mask I'm going to drag that up to the timber layer and I hit alt I dragged it up using alt <laughs> it's got a few records you are going to perform that operation using control drag anyway I don't need that layer anymore so I'm going to drag that down and bin it but as you can see I've got timber frames for my doors and windows and I'm just going to click on the glazing layer see what it looks like together I mean, it's not very refined but um, I could do a little bit of work to that but I think I can make it work and we'll just click on the other layers just see what uh, what they look like together put in some background and put in the uh, misty Irish sky I think we've done a fair bit there I think we've done quite a bit. So what I think we'll do now is we'll take a break and I suggest that uh, what you do is you go back over this tutorial and uh, start from scratch and try and do it uh, a couple of times yourself, um, getting to the point where you don't need to follow the tutorial in order to be able to complete the exercise. After you've um, done it once or twice, you should be able to complete the work that we've just done. It shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes. And then when we come back to the second installment, we'll be doing similar work but we'll be able to move a lot faster. Okay, so uh, get your practice in and I'll see you in tutorial number two.